about our solar panel project? Did? Oh no, did I please? Okay, there we go. All right. Hey everyone, so we're gonna talk to you about our solar panel project and what we decided to do and what we would recommend that you do moving forward. Um, kind of wanted to get the footage so that you could see above our heads some of the solar panels. We had uh, 56 Solaria 360, 360 watt panels installed. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about why you would wanna probably look at Tesla. It really comes down to the cost of, of uh, the cost per watt um, if you're looking for a payback. But we love it, right, Trace? Yeah, it's great, especially in the afternoon when I'm doing laundry for free. I know, right? Right now. I mean, like right now, for example, it's it's a beautiful February day and it's 54, 55 degrees, not too warm, but the solar panels are generating like 17 kilowatts because it's a 20 kilowatt system. And so I've got both ovens on, I've got the washing machine on, and we're still selling back to the grid because we have a net meter set up, so. And we just had the overflow on the pool. Oh yeah, we had the pool, and we got the pool pumps on. So we've got, you know, three pumps on the pool. We got an overflow, and we have a, um, uh, we have basically the general, the main pool pump. So it's a good catch. Not to mention whatever vamps or or regular draw you have going on in the house. Okay. So check it out. Let us know what you think, and uh, hopefully we can help you guys decide if you want to uh, get into a solar system. We love it. We think it's the, the right thing to do. It's pretty awesome. How and many panels do we have? 56. 56. 56. Yeah, we upped it because we could the typical system is six kilowatts. The smaller systems we went to 20 kW because it's really trying to get us to offset our total power consumption. But what we've learned is that we overproduce. We ha even though we have battery storage, and we'll talk about that, we don't have enough storage. So we fill up the batteries and then we're selling back to the grid and the grid pays us pennies on the dollar, literally, um, for the power consumption or the power uh, generation that we're selling. Maybe once we finish off the basement and have more square footage, it won't be, we won't be selling back so much. Yeah. Well, and like, like that's why, that's why you got it. You got to also, so um, basically you want to make sure that you are, um, if you plan and you actually plan your activity around the, around your best uh, generation, you can actually, uh, you know, like plan your habits, your use of you know, when you're washing clothes, drying clothes, uh, all your major, major appliances, you can actually um, really benefit. We haven't quite tuned that up yet, but we're getting better at it. So when we used to wash dishes at night and do laundry at night when the rates went down. Yeah, but they I don't. I think that's what most people do, but now we do it during the day because it's basically free. It's, it's free if you do it when we're overproducing, right? When we're producing more than our batteries can take and more than and, and, uh, we're, when we're selling back to the grid. Because again, I think the grid pays us like three cents a kilowatt hour and we're paying over 10 cents. So your best, your, your, your best play is to, is to use all your appliances when you're, when you're generating the most power, which for us is between two and 4 p.m. in and in 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 around that time frame because we, we face Southwest. So say hi, Isabel. Hi, here, just scoot over this way so everybody can see you. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Do you love our solar panels? Yeah. So now you see the Solar Edge manufacturer diagram, which pretty much replicates what our system is, which shows the solar panels sending power to the inverter, which then distributes it to the battery packs and to the transformer, which then sends it to AC loads, then to the energy meter, the excess, which then net meters or cells back to the grid, and then it has an integrated monitoring platform, which we'll show you here. Here's a snapshot of the app. Absolutely love this thing. It shows you how much power the solar array is generating, how much power the house is consuming, and how much power you're selling back to the grid and storing on the batteries or using from the batteries. So it allows you to tailor your your consumption habits to meet your power generation, which is pretty awesome. So here you see the two 9.8 kilowatt LG batteries for storage. So when the, when the solar panels are overproducing, it can store the power to distribute back into the system uh, when uh, it's not generating power. 
There is the inverter, essentially, that, that manages the power distribution into the batteries and then back to the house um, when the batteries are charged. And then there is the cutoff uh, and switch in case you need to do work and you want to disconnect the batteries from the house system. Here are the exterior components of the Solar Edge system that manage the power distribution to the net meter, which is provided from the utility company. You can see that little red arrow. And then you see the power cutoffs to the right uh, that allow the power company to shut off power from the solar panel system to the grid if, in case they want to work on the house. Okay, so now this is where the rubber hits the road for this video. This is the financial analysis. What's really cool about this is I captured the, the cost per month of electricity from 2019, that was pre-system, to 2020 when I installed the system approximately August. And so you can see the costs start to go down. And then 2021, where we had a benefit of the full year, and you can even see in August, negative $16. And that's a result of that net metering um, option, which is pretty awesome. And then you can see the savings estimate from the contractor. What's cool about this is, we went from 3,000, 30, almost 3,500 down to $900. And I'm telling you, we could have gotten that better if we'd have managed the usage of major appliances when we did laundry, things like that. So, um, and I think the savings estimates, even though they're 40% off approximately, they would have been probably cl a lot closer, but they didn't take into account our pool and our pool pumps. We have three main pool pumps that run. And so that throws that off. But let's look at the analysis here. Net, the system costs $70,000, take out the tax, credit 18,000 you have a net system cost of 51,887 that would have been about 40,000 because we lumped in a $10,000 service upgrade to the house um, but all in you're looking at about a 20 year payback not accounting for increases in energy cost um, and so that's about 25 2600 dollars uh, per per year savings resale value uh, of about 30,000 roughly per um, some some uh, real estate friends of mine so the annual benefit really um, works out to about uh, 1500 above uh, the cost if you factor in the, res the resale value and all that stuff. So the cost per kilowatt hour after rebate was $2.59. And based on my research, and, and you, you can add, comment in the comments below if, if you see, see otherwise, but uh, a Tesla system after rebate would have been about $1.48, and therefore it would have been about 11-year payback. So I would tell you how to do this again. If I were to do this again, I would do the Tesla panels because the cost per kilowatt hour is king. They also have the, the solar roof, which is really awesome. So my analysis is solar is awesome. We're basically our own utility, but at the end of the day, um, it comes down to cost per kilowatt hour and, and Tesla appears to be the king in that department. So in summary, would I do solar panels again? The answer is 100% yes. Now, what I would advise is if you're building new construction, I would recommend you do the integrated Tesla solar roof. That seems to be the way to go um, for the, the maximum performance, lowest cost, and, and, and best durability. Um, if it's a retrofit situation, you know, existing home, I would 100% do a retrofit panel system. Again, I would do more battery storage, quite frankly, because I'm overproducing and the grid doesn't really pay you back as much as you as they charge you. So it's really in your best interest to store as much of the power and use as much as your own self-generated power. But uh, I would absolutely do a retrofit system and I would recommend based on the information that I've found and based on the analysis that I've done, I would do a Tesla system. Um, they do at the price per watt at, at uh, my due diligence set shows me that it's $2.21 per watt before uh, federal rebate that's the way to go um, you know what, what could be better you know your your own utility essentially you're you're sending power back to the grid if you're net metering like we are and overproducing and that's a great feeling um, we're energy self-sufficient on on a lot of days where we have a lot of sun um, as it relates to electricity that's a great feeling it's you know um, it, it really does feel good to uh, not be you know, uh, using, consuming energy off the grid. Um, you know, it's good for the planet. It's good for us. We love it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments and uh, stay tuned for some other cool videos that we'll have posted.